Hello and welcome to Code Corner. This is a video series we do at Mayfield Renewables talking about codes and standards as they relate to the PV and PV plus storage industries. Today, I'm gonna to focus in on the National Electrical Code, the 2023 version, and specifically looking at section 250.122, a sizing of equipment grounding conductors. So this is a section, There's we'll start off in article 690, push us into 122 to understand you know, what are the requirements around sizing these and making sure that we're appropriately looking at our circuits and having our equipment grounding conductors be sized so that we can uh, safely bond all of our equipment together. So first off, 690.45. The equipment grounding conductor section actually starts earlier in 690.42. So recommend, you know, going and looking at that if you're not super familiar with it. And, you know, I'd recommend also pausing and reading through the code language as I show it on the next few screens so that you're able to read it, kind of comprehend it, and then we'll put it in practice. So 250.122 as it relates to article 690 is 690.45 says we're going to size our circuits based on that section. Now, the first thing I like to point out is we are being referred to the entire section of 250.122. If you're familiar with that code section, you know there's a table in there. I'm going to show you the table here in a few minutes. But the table kind of is the meat of it all, but the entire section you need to make sure you read and understand to apply this properly. Now, one of the unique things about our PV systems is that we can have circuits without overcurrent protection. And the reason why that's important, the reason why I'm saying that now is before we get into 250.122, the table that tells us how to size this EGC is based on overcurrent device sizes protecting the circuits. And so in PV systems, we have situations where you don't have to have overcurrent protection. That is back in 690.9. We've put out other videos. We've talked about this on Code Corner before, so recommend going and taking a look at that uh, if, if it's helpful for you, if you need either a refresher or understand you know, when we actually don't need overcurrent devices in these circuits, because it's relatively uncommon. You, know, you don't see very many circuits that don't require overcurrent protection. So in the situation, where you have one string or two strings in parallel, that's really the, the typical way that we don't require overcurrent protection in our circuits. And if you have that and you're connecting it to say an inverter, then you need to use a presumed size of overcurrent device to properly size your EGC. And so I'll show you that again, we'll, we'll pull the table up, we'll kind of go through that. And then I'll show you an image where we don't have overcurrent device and you would, we'll kind of walk you through what those, what those steps would look like, what those calculations would look like so that you can size those properly. So there's, that's the you know, first parts of those. And then there's that last sentence there where it talks about increases for our EGC to address voltage drop shall not be required. So again, this is, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, I guess, with the 250.122 section but in section 250.122, the charging language says, if you size, if you upsize your conductors, then you need to upsize your equipment grounding conductor proportional to the size that you've increased. So what all that means is code's gonna tell you, here's your bare minimum wire size. That will make it safe to run the ampacity in that wire. You may say, well, I'm running a really long distance. I'm worried about voltage drop. Um, or there's other, you know, that's typically the number one reason we do it. So you, 250.122 would say, oh, you sized from this size wire to a bigger wire, so you need to upsize that equipment grounded conductor proportional to that upsize. And what Article 690 is saying is, actually for PV systems, you don't have to do that. So this is one you can put into play, and it might be one you need to talk to your AHA about to make sure that they understand because they're going to be expecting to see that EGC get larger as those circuit conductors get larger because of voltage drop reasons. So this is a very specific case where article 690 overrides 250 
and allows us to do something different than that article. So all again, it's important to know that we're addressing the whole article. We're not addressing just singular parts of that, like the table. And you need to be able to go through and read it, understand it, and know what those differences are. Okay, so let's look at 251.22. I'm not gonna show you all the language. Highly recommend, as with all the code corners, again, pause it, go read the language in the code, read through all of our 250.122 in order to make sure that you're kind of taking it all in and then being able to apply it. So the idea here is you see that charging language in 251.22a, talks about the uh, grounding equipment grounding conductors of the wire type shall be size per table 251.22. I'll show you the table in the next slide. But what we are concerned with or what we're trying to size are those equipment grounding conductors. Uh, if you're looking at this image and the, the language or the definitions maybe aren't uh, super you know, on, on the top of your brain, we did another video, another code corner on the definitions of our different equipment uh, conductors, excuse me, our different grounding types of conductors. So take a look at that because they are very, very close and it can, your, the language, I still get tripped up a fair amount. Uh, it, it's easy to do to, you know, miss a, um, what the, what the code is saying and you misread it or something like that and applying different ones because the, the terms are very, very close. So recommend going and taking a look at that. But nonetheless, in this video, we're looking at that EGC, Equipment Grounding Conductor, and really what we're doing is we're bonding all of our metal components together. And so we want to make sure if there is a fault that we have a low impedance path uh, that can complete the circuit and be able to activate over current devices or ground fault protection devices in that circuit and be able to reduce the risk of shock and other hazards. So that's really the big point of the EGC is being able to, to make sure that we're bonded together and we're keeping our circuits as safe as possible. So we're going to go look at the table and we're going to base our equipment grounding conductor sizes off of those. I know I don't have it on the screen, but again, you have your code book in front of you. And so you can read through the rest of A, talks about you know the um, types of equipment grounding conductors, and then B talks about that increase in size. So if you think back to the what I just talked about in 69045 and it doesn't quite click, go read the 25122B where it says, if you increase your conductor sizes, then you have to increase the equipment grounding conductor. And 69045 says, for PV systems, actually, you don't have to do that. It probably will start to, to click together better and understand, oh, that's what the base requir requirement is saying, and here's how 690 is, is superseding that. And a big part of that really is because our PV systems are current limited, and so we don't have just this infinite amount of current that's behind our sources. And so upsize the equipment grounding conductor really doesn't do a whole lot for us because we don't have a lot more, we don't have this avail these available fault currents that are so high that we need to upsize our equipment grounding conductors. Here's table 251.22. So this is straight out of code. So if you go and look at it, you know, this is the reference that you'll see. And the table, what it's telling us is we have a overcurrent device size that's protecting the circuit on the left-hand side. And then on the right hand side, the middle and the right hand columns are copper and aluminum, respectively, conductors sizes. So, what this is saying is if you have a 15 amp overcurrent device protecting that circuit, your copper equipment grounding conductor would have to be at least a 14 gauge. A 20 amp overcurrent device results in a 12 gauge uh, equipment grounding conductor. A 60 amp goes to a 10 gauge. What you'll notice is there's a big jump there. Uh, the left-hand side is showing us typical sizes of equipment, excuse me, typical sizes of overcurrent devices. And you know, you know, there's 30 amp, 40 amp, 50 amp. So there's sizes in between that 20 to 60. But what it's saying is anything over a 20, but 60 or less, you're gonna use a 10 gauge equipment grounding conductor. So our circuit, Overcurrent protection devices are going to get larger and larger, but we don't have to do we don't have to jump our equipment grounding conductors quite the same way we do our current carrying conductors. And again, their whole purpose 
is to create that low impedance path, keep everything bonded together. They're not carrying current on a regular basis. They just need to be able to, in a fault situation, be able to complete that circuit and operate the overcurrent devices. So you see, we have those sizes, so it becomes a relatively straightforward exercise. Breaker size, equipment ground and conductor size, and then you know what, what you're up against. So let's take a look at that real quick in relation to a PV system. So again, we have our PV array going to an inverter. In this case, we're not showing an overcurrent protection from the PV array to the inverter. That very well could be a possibility. So you would go and look at the spec sheet for those PV modules. You'd find the short circuit current. You'd multiply it by 1.25 twice to get what your minimum overcurrent protection device would be if you needed to install it. So again, that's all covered in 690.8 and 9, which we've done other uh, videos on. So that would help you decide what the equipment grounding conductor is for that circuit. On the inverter output from the inverter to the utility, you go and you see, well, that inverter is protected by a certain overcurrent device size, and that will dictate based on table 251.22 what the equipment grounding conductor would, what that size would need to be. So that's how you would put those into play for a, a circuit like that, like that uh, for our PV systems. Okay, so I hope that was helpful on 250.122, sizing equipment grounding conductors. This was material we took out of our 2023 NEC requirements for PV systems course, which is available on our website. I encourage you to take a look at that. You know, we dive deep into many, many topics as it relates to code and our PV systems. And then finally, questions or comments, love to hear from folks. So you can reach out to us directly uh, at these locations. Uh, you can also you know, leave comments here uh, as part of the video. So love to hear from people on this topic. If there's other topics or if you have ideas for other Code Corners, always willing to you know, hear from folks what you, what you need to hear about and what you'd like to, to see us talk about. So thanks a lot and I look forward to seeing you at the next one.